Where can you sit? Um, oh, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. Instead here, it might not hit you. It she's might not hit you. Very well. She's got only five or six. I like it because I, I like it. I don't need it. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I think if you sit here, it doesn't hit here so oh, much. Yeah, I think it'll be safe. It looks so. And Alicia had just left, and she's going to oh, join she us. She's, she's going to join us by too. no, but she's going to join us by uh, Zoom. Yeah. Oh. And so when she comes out, we wave to her. And I, I prayed for you and and Alicia. I was uh, I went to Ukraine many 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 tens of years ago before the uh, Iron Curtain fell, and we had to sneak in because we weren't allowed to be there, and so. All we were allowed to do is rent from Interest, which has on the uh, a car, which has on the, uh, uh, it says Interest, INT, which is the famous KGB, KGB. That's who they work for. It's a branch of, and that was on our license. So whoever saw it knew we're, and so we're not allowed to go beyond 50 kilometers from the big city, which is Kiev or Odessa. We are allowed to drive from Kiev to Odessa. And there's one main highway from Kiev to Odessa then 50 years ago, Eric, 45. And so we did a detour into Uman and we weren't allowed to be there. And the police came, thank you so much. Yeah. And um, well, well, one time we ran out of gas around two kilometers from there. So we, I was with a friend who knew how to hitch from her earlier days before she was from around and so she taught me how to hitch and we got on a big truck, which I couldn't even get to the first step. I don't know how I did it. This is the middle of the night. Kilo, I was crazy. The people young are basically crazy. And we left the car because there was no um, gas. It ran out of gas. And we got to Uman and we followed the direction that we received. And we finally got to Kever. It's the middle of the night and we're praying for a couple hours. And then we retraced our steps and walked back to the car. And at the car, we saw that the, the lights were going on and off, on and off. And we saw that there were policemen around the car. And we didn't know, did they come five minutes ago or five hours ago? So the best defense is offense. And we said to them, oh, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to find you. Help us. We got stuck. We got lost. We don't know where we're going. Yeah. We ended up without gas. Could you help us? So they uh -huh. switched from putting us into jail to helping us, and they got a, a can of gas, and um, and then they sent us off to Odessa. And on the way back, um, we um, so thank God we walked in and we parked. And we went again to Kevin Rebbe Nachman, and we were by the Baal Shem Tov and Rebbe Levitzev of our teacher. And at his, hi, at his Kever, we, um, we were praying, and then the police came. And they looked very serious, the Russian police. They have big boots and big, you know, they're tall, and they're standing over us, and we're praying. So I said to them, I showed them my sitter. They don't know. It's a sitter of everything, you know, everything from Shachris, Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh. And I um I said, Niet finito, niet finito. I'm not yet finished. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> said, oh, okay, okay. And they let us pray a little bit more. And then they brought us for questioning to the police house. Anyway, thank God. This time there was no police and no drama. And no, we just we just went and we went to Balshemto. And on the way, our leader who led 12 women. Six of the 12 women were in their 20s. So you can imagine, hurrah, singing, dancing. Oh! And I loved every second. They were full of life, full of excitement. And I loved it. It's very catchy. And I was the grandma of the trip or the great grandma. <laughs> anyway, it was wonderful. And uh, they gave me a seat in front in, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, bus, you know, bus because, you know, I said, well, good, it tastes to get old. Look, you know, what you get all these pluses, you know? And on the way back, everyone switched because the back of the van is not comfortable. I said, okay, I'll switch. No, 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 no. You stay where you are in the front of them. So, so Baruch Hashem. On the way, on the bus, she told stories of the Tzadikim we went to, for example, the Baal Shem told, and Rav Levi, it's a Bardichim. She told stories about them, how great they were, and all the miracles that they did. 
and um, how kind and loving they were to Am Yisrael. Lev Yitzhak of Ardichin was known as the Sunny Gore, the defense attorney of Am Yisrael, because everything he did was to find goodness and, and purity in us and to bring it to Hashem and say, Hashem, look how beautiful your children are. Look how wonderful they are. For example, sometimes the children, children, do children, do people would um, have to um, smuggle in some things to different countries because the laws were like they were hungry and they needed, let's say, flour for Pesach. Anyway, they smuggled under the nose of the flour to make matzah, yeah. the KGB. And yet when it comes to cleaning for Pesach, there's no police, he said to Hashem, there's no policeman watching you, watching them, and they're careful even this much, a little, little dot of comments not to, not to have left. And he said, You're, he wants to make a transaction with Hashem. Hashem, it's a beautiful song in Yiddish, also in Hebrew, maybe in English. Hashem, I want to make a transaction with you. Yeah, and, and he calls Hashem Tata She. She is the beginning letters of Sheikhya, like, you should be well, <laughs> Hashem. It's like children, they would say, Mama she, Tata she, my dear mother, you should be well. It's a, I think, Polish, Russian. So he'd say, this is a transaction I want to make for you. I would like you to give us, the Jewish people, good health, children, and good parnasa. And I'm going to give you back something. It's not, yeah, I'm not asking for a gift. I'm going to give you back something. It's, it's a business transaction. I'm going to give you back all their sins. A time of some shine. All the sins of the Jewish people. And this song goes on to say, and if you ask, is it not? Are you going to sing it now? Uh, I don't oh, know if I so can. If, I if, don't know if I hire it. If we'll make it with your abide, if we'll make it with your abide, if we'll name it Parnassah, Kinder, and, and Gesund, and if we'll make it a time of bonus shine, all kinds of sins. And if you say the this life of life, it's not fair. This is not exactly a good business sound transaction. I'm giving you life and children and parnasa, and you're giving me sins. I'm, I'm getting the raw end of the deal. No, this is what we give you. This is what you're so kind, Hashem. Love the Jewish people so much. And the Jewish people, under all their sins, it is, is full of purity and goodness. And he gives Sukkim to, to prove it from Hashem's Torah, how we are good and kind. And then he, and then he says, Yiskada, Yiskada, Shnei Rabba, may the name of Hashem be great. So we went to his uh, grave, his, his Siona, we daven there that we sh that Hashem should look down on us and protect all the Jewish people and end all the wars and end all the gullahs and bring Geula Shlema for all, for all of us, for all, for, for all, for all the Jews and for all the world. Mm -hmm. And, and Val Shempo, she told this story, which I had heard so many years ago and I forgot for so many, you know, me and Val Shempo's stories are like my best friend, you know, and now I have another one in my <laughs> 10 favorite. So, so there, uh, there was a very rich man somewhere in the country that said he will give a ruble for every story anyone remembers about the Baal Shem Tov. Who is the Baal Shem Tov? He was the founder of Hasidus. Is it that man that's like that? No. Oh, it's not He that was man. the founder of the Hasidic movement. So he said, I'll give one ruble for whoever has a, a story that they can remember from the Baal Shem Tov. One of his close students, who had many stories, said, wow, I'll be happy to do it. He wants it, and I'll use some money. I'll use it for my family, for tzedakah. Traveled very far to his house. He spent Shabbos there. He's about to tell the stories of the Baal Shem Tov. It's after the Friday night meal. Well, all of a sudden, he goes blank. He cannot remember anything. And so the rich man that's giving him a beautiful Shabbos and was so excited to hear stories said, no problem. Let me tell you from the trip. Okay, go to sleep tomorrow morning after, you know, we'll, we'll dive and we'll eat. I'm sure you'll remember something. And so after the meal, he's waiting to hear from him. And the same thing happened. Blank, he can't remember one story. And he had so many. He's so embarrassed. Like, first of all, he came very, very far. So he's upset, but also embarrassed. The man is so nice and kind and giving him such a beautiful Shabbos. Shall shoot us the same story. The love of Malka, finally, he's leaving Sunday morning. And he apologizes. And the man said, I understand, it's okay. And then he leaves on his horse and wagon, and like a half mile out, he comes back. I remember something. I, I remember a half a story. He said, tell me what it is. Tell me the half a story. 
So he said once the Baal Shem Tov was driving somewhere with his students and there was a bishop, a non-Jewish, um, like, oh, a rabbi. Pastor. Pastor. Yeah. Nick. Yeah. And, and he was there and the Baal Shem Tov sent a message to him, come now to speak to me. And he answered the student that brought the message. I can't, I'm in the middle of giving a sermon on Sunday morning. He goes back to the Baal Shem Tov, gives him another me message, come now. So he interrupted everything. He came to the Baal Shem Tov and they spoke together for many hours. And he left, and he left the city. And that's the only thing I remember that happy story. The man hugged him, the man kissed him. The man danced. He said, I knew when you came and I knew when you forgot everything that you're the person I need. And that half a story, I'm going to tell you the other half. I was the bishop. I had left Judaism. I had left the ways of our fathers. I had wow. left and became a Catholic bishop. And then the Valshamton spoke to me and aroused in me the yearning to again be a Jew. And to again come back to, to Hashem and to his mitzvahs, which deep in my heart, I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's the truth. If I not tell him, he says that if a Jew says to him, I don't believe in God, I'm an atheist, I don't believe him. I don't believe what he says, because there's no such thing. Because deeper, deeper, somewhere deep inside, the deepest place, there's purity and there's faith in Hashem. Each of us, even such a person, even the bishop. And he asked the Baal Shem Tov, he's telling the rest of the story. I asked the Baal Shem Tov, how will I know that my teshuva has been accepted? Because for years, he, this is a long ago story, years ago, he's been working on Shabbos and helping people and giving tzedakah and praying. And he said, when you hear the first half of the story, you'll know your teshuva has been accepted. Oh, wow. And now he oh, came wow. and told him the first half. He forgot everything. And that's all he needed to hear. And he was so happy. So she's telling us these stories on the bus, going to the Baal Shem Tov. She also passes around. I mean, this was just so amazing. Passes around um, stories and, and Torah, like words of, words of Torah that um, the Baal Shem Tov said. And to hear what he said. This is Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov. He was the founder of Hasidim. Atzus no Ela Sharish. I'm sadness locks the gates to heaven. When we're sad, how can we get through to heaven? How can we, a, a prayer that's from sadness is like, it's locked because Hashem wants us to be happy and wants us to trust in him and not say you did wrong, Hashem. Look at my miserable state. And I'm sad and upset and probably angry. That locks it. Tefila Hosachan. The prayer opens up these locked gates. And Simcha Mekohol Shaber. Simcha breaks the locks. It breaks the gates. So when we're happy, we can't even, there's no, no such thing as getting to a locked door between us and Hashem. It brings us straight to Hashem. And he also said, I'm sure all of you heard this place where we think, that's where we are. So if we think we're in a good place, if we think we're close to Hashem, if we think all the positive things, of, you know, the, to be positive, mindfulness, we think the good things, we'll get there. Because we're there, because we believe in Hashem, and He certainly can get us everything, everything, everything that we want. The leader of the group lives in my building, Sal Shepherd. Her name is Sigal Banim. She's an amazing woman. I only know her hello, hello for all these years. With a big building, there's 100 apartments. So it's not like, you know. So she is so wonderful and kind and funny. <laughs> and she said, and she has a problem, like she needs a lot of money, like to do a mitzvah and she doesn't have any. She says, Hashem, I'm so interested in seeing how you're gonna work this out for me. What, what's the next chapter? Who are you gonna send it through? What's the hashkatha that's gonna happen? I'm just sitting back, I'm just so excited to see how you're gonna do this. She's very close to Hashem and very relies on him and very, very calm and very happy and so, she, she was a perfect leader for the group. She instilled in us a lot of simple and a lot of wanting to be close to Hashem and the and the, and the merit of the tzaddikim. What are they here for? And they're not here because I'm an idol worship. They got the beard. They're true tzaddikim who are, I'm nothing, but maybe I can help you come close to Hashem. 
maybe I could be a good conduit, like with my with my words, my encouragement, my love, my caring, my asos, my advice, you come close to Hashem. That's all they want, that we come close to Hashem. And so Hashem Tov also says, the stars in the heaven, they look like small little dots, right? Really, really tiny. But each one is an amazing world. Each, they're amazing worlds. And so there could be Jewish people that look oh, left alone, nothing, small, eh, you know what I mean? And you know, those very Jews are a remote, they a great world. So we should never underestimate our beauty, the purity, the strength of each of us. No matter how we look, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're going through, we are great worlds, each of us. Even if we don't shine, we're very, we're more than shining. We're like, we're like totally, totally shining. She reminds me of a survey they did after um, Hurricane Sandy came. Remember in Brooklyn or, um, I don't know, it was 10 years ago? Anywhere between 8, 18, no, Hurricane so Sandy, 20? No. Uh huh. So yeah, and houses, everything. So so you know this. Um, they did a survey because they saw that some trees toppled over, and just on the next block, they withstood the rains and the hurricane, and they didn't and they didn't fall apart. So they made a survey and and uh, tree experts what was the difference. So the ones that fell apart, they were in a nice ma a manner, beautiful, beautiful, taking care of a state of somebody who had sprinkling systems underneath the ground, you know, how it's automatic, it goes on like 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., you know, so nobody should get wet walking in the sidewalks and when it's not sunny outside, not to burn the grass and it's automatic sprinkling system. And so they were fine, they lived a life of uh, luxury, you know, they, they were ever a little sunny day outside and they were a little hungry, a little thirsty. Okay, in the middle of the night, they got fed with enough water to get them through the next 20, 22 hours. And they were doing beautiful, they beautifully, they had beautiful leaves and 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 then down the block, the trees that maybe weren't were in the public area, they weren't um, you know, being uh, met, uh, kept up so beautifully. They weren't uh, owned by a private person and they didn't have any sprinkling system. So the same sun beat down on them and they got thirsty. So when they got thirsty in order to survive, their roots traveled under the ground, searching for a little moisture, searching for something to give them life so that they don't become a dry tree and, and die. And so what did they do? They developed Roots, they develop long, strong roots trying to find a little area where they can where they can have a little moisture, a little water. They were not toppled over by the earth. But the ones that lived the life, they, they just, that's it. Because they didn't have strong roots or far, far reaching roots. They didn't need to exercise their, their amuna, their, their roots, because everything was handed to them. And so sometimes it, well, it's always for Hashem has a good reason for us and a good plan out of love. Sometimes we see it and sometimes it's to, uh, advers adversary or something negative is that we should strengthen our roots, strengthen our look who we are, look back to our parents, to our Torah, to our family, to Hashem, look with the Muna, and then it gives us that strength when we're going to need it because we have strong roots, we have strong roots. We've really done a lot on our Muna muscles. And so when we realize that everything that Hashem gives us is out of his love, it just makes it so much, I don't know, more exciting, more happy, more doable, more easy that we get through it with love and with calm feeling of I'm in good hands, Hashem is taking care of me. And um, so that was about the Baal Shem Tov. We spoke about the, the Kochavim and the uh, Levites and Bardicha came from a family that was um, not Hasidim, and, and they were very upset that he was going to Reb Baruch Mejbaz, another student from the Baal Shem Tov. And when he came back after six weeks, his father-in-law says to him, what did you do there? 
where were you? He said, well, I was by the Reb Baruch Medjavis. He said, oh, you were? What did you learn there? Very, you know, and uh, cynical. He says, I learned that there's a Hashem, a God in the world. He said, ha, 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 that's all you learned? Six weeks you wasted from Torah and this is what you come back with? Let's call in the servant girl. Non-Jewish servant girl. Tell me something. Um, is there a God in the world? Oh, yes, definitely. There's a God in the world, she answers. So her father-in-law said, you see, even she knows. That's what you get from Rebara Benjamin, is the great Hasidic Rebbe. And to which the Rebbe um, Yitzhak of Bardichev answered his father-in-law, she says, but I know. Mm -hmm. And so as much as we hear, it's we hear things, if we learn it in our mind, we have to bring it down to our heart. That's our goal, to feel it, to live it to experience it, not to just know it mentally. Because what we want to do is we want to live Hashem. We want to live His Torah. They once said that there were people in the time of the Haskalah, before the war in Europe, they could be learning a piece of Gemara and smoking on Shabbos simultaneously. How could that go together? Because they kept the, the knowledge in their head. And so it didn't go into their life. They didn't live it. So God forbid they could does a great job, but never ever saw a Jew, he went on to say, was in the middle of saying Tehillim and smoking on Shabbos. Because Tehillim sounds, is emotional. It's us. It's something in our heart. It's something we connect to Hashem, we part of Hashem. It, it doesn't go with, 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 that could be with, with sin. So may we all be Zoha to serve Hashem deep in our hearts and use all the knowledge that we have to, to lighten up our, our worlds, worlds of everyone found us in, in the whole world because that's the strength of Torah. Um, so I'd like to, um, uh, this um, class we're getting together should be for uh, uplifting and for elevation of the neshama of my father-in-law, Daniel ben Abraham, whose yard site is today. And for Shalema for Leah Basara and Shlomo Hirsch ben Dusha and Roi Chaim ben Meirav. And, and to say the name of who uh, much of this class I heard from Rev. Uh, Fischl Schefter, and I read something which I just came across. It says, when I do what's right, Hashem will do what's left. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> it's just cute. <laughs> so it, it's just we're in good we're in good hands. Uh, you know, you know. Um, did you ever? I you guys drive or you don't know, ever walk around, but in the big streets, big like highways. Sometimes there's not a lot of pedestrian crossing, so they don't change the light every few seconds to red, and then the cars have to wait. It's just not worth it. Once in a while, somebody needs to cross, so there's this, a button over there for pedestrians that says push it, and then that will automate, that will get moving, that, that the, the light will turn red for the cars, and you'll be able to cross. Mm -hmm. So when you push it, it gives you a message. It says, your request has been received. <laughs> So I pushed it like 10 times. Because <laughs> I heard the shear. That was the title of the shear. Your request has been received. When we ask something for Hashem, it's like, it's automatic. He says it was received. Like, don't worry. Be happy. That's a sign. If we if we have faith in Hashem after we pray, if we're happy, it's a sign we believe in Hashem. We're sad. Like, who did you pray to? Is he going to help me? Did he hear me? Oh. Of course, it's in his hands now. Your request, he cut lost. Like that opportunity to push that. I laugh every time I hear it. So um, let's talk about the Parsha. Anyone know the name of the Parsha after your beautiful shir? Thank you, Chukas. And Chukas, there's three kinds of um, mitzvahs. And the three kinds of mitzvahs are as follows. There's Mishpati, which everyone understands in our in our uh, mind, mind of a human being, we can understand we shouldn't kill each other. We can understand we shouldn't steal. It's like natural. Natural, exactly. Then there's Edus, which shows that Hashem created the world, like Shabbos, maybe Tefillin. Then there's Chukim, which is Chukas, Cho. The word Chukas inside is the word Cho. Cho is a statue. It's a... Um, Something not understandable by the human normal 
mind that we have because it's like, why, you know? So it's something that, see, this is a hope. This is a hope, these words. And this is the type of mitzvah that we do not understand. And this is Chukas, the name of our, this week's coming up, Parsha. And it says in the Pasuk, Zos Chukas HaTorah. This is the hope, the non-understandable mitzvahs that were to be given of the Torah. Meaning we should, the Orachim says, look at the whole Torah as if everything is a hope. Even the mitzvahs we understand, like you said, naturally, like thou shalt not kill, not steal. It's like, of course, otherwise, you know, we know people around, it's not right. And then, you know, something will be faster and they'll get you. And like, that's not how we can live a life with civilians and with normal and with, uh, you know, living. But the whole Torah we should keep, not because I understand it, but because Hashem told me, because I believe in Hashem. Even the ones that seem make a lot of sense, even those that seemingly don't. And this is actually like the main one or the one that's given as an example of a hope that doesn't make sense. It's a para aduma. It's a red cow. And we take it and we and and in times of the base of it, turned it into ashes and then put the ashes on somebody who had been in contact with a dead person. And therefore was not allowed to enter the base of Mikdash, the holy temple, and do the karbonos, do the sacrifices. And so when he got sprinkled with this, and maybe he had to wait a while, he was allowed to re-enter the base of Mikdash. What's, what's all this about? A cow, red, and sprinkling. And, and the one who prepared the cow, the kohe, he became impure. So this powder, it purifies the impure person and makes impure the per pure Kohen who, who made it, who like, you know, who ground it and everything. So what, which is it? So these things are very hard for us to understand. So what I learned about this is, it's a beautiful, is that we take, it's like looking for the good points in each of us, looking for the purity in each of us. How, how does it work? Para Aduma is a red cow, red cow. And red is always known as the color of blood. blood. Thank you. Din, justice, it's harsh. And you take that and you turn it into Para Aduma, harsh, blood, Tamima, perfect. Tamima means Tamimas, simplicity, perfection, purity. Asher Einbo Moon, it is not blemished at all. And so when we can take and look at somebody, ourselves especially, and see something that looks red, like it looks very um, not so good, like a, a lie or bloody, something not pure, something sin, something negative. And we can turn it into the words of the Pusik, Tamima, something, she didn't mean it. She had good intentions. She was to and, and simplify it and beautify it. And that's how we can come to to all of us who are close to Hashem. Now that Sadiqim do this, it's Sadiqim, true Sadiqim, like Hashem, Moshe Rabbeinu, comes down and takes all, like Reb Levi, it's a Bardisha, he sees things that are negative and turns it into good. He says, Hashem, take their sins and give us back all the good, all the brachim. Because he looks at us and sees the beauty, he sees the good, he sees the purity. And yet when he does that, he comes down to our level he has to give up a little bit of his holy level, which is exactly what Tzadik is. I think Tzadik is just there, close to Hashem, you know, enjoying the basking in the sunlight of Hashem with the malachim. No, he comes down all the way to us. And when he's down to us, he gets a little dirty. He gets a little, you know, like uh, shell-shocked. I don't know what to call it. He does it out of his love for us. It's worth it for him not to be on that high madrega come all the way down to bring us up to Hashem. That's the truth. That's the beauty of the true tzaddik. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu did. He offered, he said, erase me from your Torah. Just don't hurt the Jews. I don't care about myself. I want I want the Jews to have, to have a good life, to be close to you. I want their purity to be shown, to be realized. And then we start to look at ourselves like that star 
it seems like so, you know, gone and nothing. No, I'm a whole world. I'm a whole, I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm, I'm stage center. When we feel that we, we want to do more, we want to, we want to serve Hashem better. So, um, skip, skip. Miriam, uh, in this week's Parsha, Miriam passed away. Miriam, the prophet, remember she sang a song with Jewish people? Yes. Yes. Remember Miriam? Yes. She sang a song with the Jewish people. Just waking up, waking myself up. And, wake up, wake up, Mary. And when Paro decreed that all the Jewish boys born should be put into the river and killed, and um, Moses was born three months early, so he was hid. Now three months are up, and they come looking for him. Not three months, nine months. They didn't realize he was born early, and then his mother hid him. So they come looking for him. So what does his sister do? Miriam, she puts him in a little bassinet and lets him flow into the water. The Yamo Tamo Merachok, she looked from afar. What is Hashem going to do? Sometimes our issue is not immediate, but it's coming. Just like my friend who led our group said, Hashem, I, I'm wondering, how are you gonna how are you gonna work this one out? What are you gonna do for me? How, how are you gonna like Yeshua send me? I, I'm just so curious to see how you're gonna do this. In other words, she knew she's in good hands. But Pasha said that, that he pulled, your request is being taken care of, and she's just she's praying, she's giving tzedakah, she's doing good deeds, she's not sleeping on the job, and okay, wake me up when Yeshua's here. But she's not worried. Lubavitch Rebbe said, "Be tough and it's like there's a check in the mail. I don't have it yet, but it's in the mail. It's coming a day if there's a a, a strike will come in a week. It's coming. And so this is how she she felt, and this is how Miriam looked from afar. And remember, Basia, the daughter of Paro, found him, and she said, "Oh, there's a baby in there." And she she couldn't reach him. She was far, he was far away. And she stretched out as her arm as far as she could. Then it got longer, got longer, and she brought him in. All we have to do is what we can do. Hashem does the, what's left. We do what's right, that's what's left. And we have to worry about Mami Mount Everest. The mitzvahs are halok benimo. They're simple and sweet to do. We don't have to turn ourselves into a pretzel. Hashem doesn't want it. Remember how he told you to smile? And you said, oh. what do you want me to do, climb Mount Everest? And he said, no, I want you to smile. Yeah, he wants us to smile. That's sometimes like Tom's climbing Mount Everest. Yeah. But it's okay. He gets yeah. a, little, a little one out of us. A half smile, half yeah. move. You know, he, he's very forgiving and loving. He's not coming here to bang us. He's coming here to bring us up, to show us his love, Hashem. So she said to her father, she was really gutsy. I think she was five years old when Moshe was born, but she was a pretty smart five-year-old. She says to him, Daddy, you're worse than Paro. She said, Paro made a gazera decree against the boys. Any boy who's born will be put into the um, Nile River, the kill. And you... By divorcing mommy and by having it since you're in Sada Bador, everyone went and divorced their wives. Bring, I never heard that he divorced. I never knew that was divorced. He remarried. Life. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought you could have more wives anyway. Well, so you'll hear. So you don't need to divorce. Your so, wife. anyway, he did it to show that we don't want to bring more children to because this is a time of where they're hurting, they're killing the newborn boys. And she said, What about the girls? And so he remarried. His wife, they had a son, Moshe, and he 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 was very Nashka al Rosha. The Gemara says gave her a kiss on her on her forehead. His five year old daughter, but then when they took Moshe away, he was upset at her. What's going to be from from you know Miriam Hanavia? You said it will be good, and I relied on you. Now they're taking him to Paro's court, to his home. So she said, "Wait, let's see how Shem will work it out." And she arranged, they were arranged for Yocheved, his real mother, to nurse him. So he was nursed by a Jewish holy woman. And, and the Gemara Sota says something beautiful, which I never knew until I read this. Maybe you knew. She had two names, Miriam and Azuva. Azuva means, you know, in Hebrew, you're taking Hebrew three words. Azovati, leave me alone. Azov. So here, yeah, those were those. Yes, but Miriam. 
So she had another name. She had an, a, a third name. name. Right, right, because they were. She had, besides that, she had a name, Azuva, which means forgotten. Azuva, Le Azuva means, Kazoh, leave me, left alone, abandoned. Thank you. Abandoned. She was abandoned. And she was very, very abandoned. Thank you. She was very, very great. She led the choir of the women by Kriyat Yamsu, even though the Jews were so great, like it says, by Yavo Bnei Yisrael sons, the children of Hashem came, she was great, she led them, and when she spoke against her brother, remember she and her brother Aaron spoke against Moshe, she became Saras, leper, she became grief, she became sick and ugly, and no one wanted to marry her, and so Kalev came, remember Kalev ben Yipuna, one of the two spies, the two tribes that went to Mars HaPelad two weeks ago in, in Hebron, and David the schus of Avraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov and our mothers to save them, him from the advice of the others that Israel's not a place and it's scary and we're never gonna we're gonna never going to um, conquer it. So he was very big tzaddik. He married her, and the Gemara he learned that when you want to marry a woman, you should look at her brothers to see how they are. He said, "Well, Moshe and Aaron, they're 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 good. They're pretty good. I'll take her." Everyone said, "How could you? She's sick." So he said, I'm marrying her. I don't care. And he nursed her back to hell. So the Rishonim, the rabbis asked, what's the big chiddush? If a person's spouse gets sick, they don't leave them. They help them to get better. That's, you know, they're, they're here for till death, you know, for thick and thin. That was once they get married. But he hadn't gotten married yet. He didn't have to marry her, but he did. Ke'av. Yeah, right, right. And he wanted her and he married her knowing that she was sick, ka'av, like a father. But when, when a daughter gets sick, the father doesn't say, okay, I'm, I'm disowning you, you're sick. No, I'm with you. Your pain is my pain. He took care of her like a father. And and you know what happened? She turned into a na'ara. Now she has a new name. It's called a beautiful, beautiful maiden. Sahor, her face was shining like the afternoon sun. Everyone was jealous of her beauty. She turned from Azuba, being dis, ab being abandoned, into Nara, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, she went through a, a very hard situation. She and she and her father was upset at her. And the and this is Egypt. She could have been a victim and said, "I've been hurt." But instead, you know what she did? She wrote through everything. She had a moon of a. The time of Merachok, she saw that even if Yeshua is not imminent, it's going to come. I'm just hanging on to Hashem, and I believe in Him because He loves me and us very, very much. And she wasn't afraid. And the Torah goes on to say, "Vatamas Sham Miriam." What did Hashem do? Hashem took like like she was a like pleasant, pleasant, very beautiful uh, stone, like a pearl, like a diamond took it from this world and placed the diamond on his keta, on his crown. And she was in a higher world. She was in a better world. She was close to Hashem. And um, we had the zechus of the water from Miriam. Every Motzei Shabbos comes back. The well of Miriam. That's why people have a custom to drink water on Saturday night. Because the well of Miriam is somewhere around the world. It might be our water that we're drinking. Because we don't drink kind of Shabbos. We drink water, and it's connected to Miriam. And why Matzei Shabbos? Some of us are very sad Matzei Shabbos because Shabbos left. It's one reason why we smell the summing during Havdalah to like give our a life back to our neshama because we're so sad. We have to wait another six days for Shabbos. It's hard. We miss it already. So. On um, Matzah Shabbos, we have the Bissamim and we have the well of Miriam to remind us Hashem isn't going anywhere and He loves you. This is a different way to serve Him during the week with work and on Shabbos with resting. And it's all the same Hashem. It's all the same Jewish people. So it, uh, we don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to get upset and we don't have to worry. So um, the Orachim is teaching us that, like a diamond in Hashem's crown, that's that's Miriam who is shining and, and giving us exclusive water. So if somebody would like to read uh, number one, 
Well, you know, we did that. Let's do number two on the second side. It's chapter 20, Pusik number one. And we need to turn it around. <laughs> Who would like to read it in Hebrew by Yavau? Chaya? What? Yeah. Oh, in Hebrew? No, no, Chaya will read it in Hebrew. Oh. Yavau, the name is Thank you. The Israelites arrived in a body at the wilderness of Tim on the first new moon, and the people stayed at Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. The community was without water and they joined Moshe against Moshe and Aaron. Uh, and there was no water for the congregation since this statement follows immediately after the mention of Miriam's death. And we may learn from it that during the entire 40 years, they had the well through Miriam's marriage. Merit. Thank you very much. We had the well of water in all the 40 years. Mayim Chayim. And Talking about commitment, how Halei was so committed to marry her and to make her better and to be with her when she was green and ugly. And then she turned into Nara, beautiful. There's a beautiful story of official chapter said he went for a weekend. People that were very, very sick. It was a weekend to make them happy. And, to, and there were comedians there and actors and speakers. And there was a man that came up to him on Saturday night and said, Shabbos, and said to him, my wife is here, but she's very sick. She cannot leave the room. Would you please come to the room to repeat the Torah, the beautiful message and cheer you gave on Shabbos? He said to himself, oh, repeat it again. He gets to the room. The wife had ALS. She couldn't move anything except her eyes. She had a lot, a lot of, she had a lot of, a whole team had to get her there with all machinery, with her bed, and the bed was so big, it couldn't get out, out of the hotel room to come down to hear the classes. So the husband had asked the different speakers to come throughout, to, to come to the room to give her a, a private class. And she was so happy. The husband said to Rabbi Shep, look how happy she is. Her eyes, but he couldn't tell the eyes. The eyes couldn't move. And this way meant happy, this way not. Like he knew, the husband knew. She is so happy that you're telling her this Torah. Thank you very much. You've made her so very, very happy. Look at her eyes. And Rabbi Shefti says, never mind her. This husband was so happy. He was so committed to his wife. He brought all the medical, all the pipes, all the things to keep the machinery and the bed. And he was so happy that her eyes were like, a, 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 this is Miriam. This is an idea of commitment. This is an idea of true love. This is an idea of, of what Kale believed in her and, and treated her and, and what we can learn from Miriam. So if we can do this for each other and know that Hashem certainly, certainly, certainly is committed to helping us, certainly takes care of us, certainly is ending the war for us and bringing Mashiach. That's our next step. We just have to hold on a little, like it says about Miriam when she... When she um, that she looked from afar. She looked from afar. Merachok. Merachok. Um, when when she let her baby brother go off in the water because she didn't want him to be killed. When will Hashem send Yeshua? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. Tell me, tell us. It's Hashem soon. But even if it's Merachok, we have to hold on to that and to know He loves us. He cares about us. And like those trees in the Hurricane Sandy, we need to find, get another strength, another root, to feel a little dry and to push ourselves a little bit more. But it's all for, for our good. It's for our everlasting good forever, for Netzach and Sachim, and that he will show us his love. And um, for that, what's left? Any ideas? What's left for us to do? Any ideas? Should I give you a hint? That's right. He yeah, was done fun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and this is for something. It revives our soul to be close to Hashem. It's a holy, um, it's a holy sense of nose is to fear Hashem and love Hashem.
This is amazing. You're going to love it. Wow. What is, what's it made? Oh, Maine. It's spices. Oh. We'll help you with the bracha. Baruch. 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 You there. Now smell. Wow. Oh, it makes your nose clear. Oh, yeah, this, is, <laughs> this clears out all the negative negativity and brings in all the good. This is pass it around. Amazing. Oh, so you What else? 